automatically just think the Polite should spend more money. I'd love it if they spent more money. I don't know, but I don't think that, I, but I think this front office, whether it's because of the poll ads, whether it's because of analytics or whatever else, they're going to want to get good deals for their money. And this is one way to do that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, we, we would not like them spending more money if it, if it, uh, if it, if it doesn't work and they're saddled with a, a contract that, you know, that means they can't, you know, sign Byron Buxton or or Miguel Sano, or if you know if Sano comes back and and, and becomes a hitter again, and you know, I mean, um, there are there are expenses they're going to have on the existing team, and uh, you know, to your point, we have seen uh, a uh, contract handcuff them a little bit, uh, even though it was a it, the contract was deserved, and and so I, I think. That's what's going around baseball now, and especially with this regime, they're saying, you know, if if, if we have any doubts at all, we're going to opt away from uh, mortgaging our future. I don't think that's a I don't think that's a bad idea. I, you know, as much as we'd like them to, you know, win the World Series this year, I still think they're setting up for an organization that can be competitive year in, year out, and I think it's okay for them to take a wait and see attitude and see how this club does. Uh, before automatically deciding that, uh, well, we see this on paper. This would be this looks better on paper if we go out and, and get, you know, a, a, a closer, Kimbrel, or we sign Keiko, or whatever that you know these you know, everybody's wanting them to do. I think it's fair to say, you know, let's 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 see what we got. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about what the expectations for Miguel Sano should be as he rehabs and gets ready to come back. Do want to thank Tony Hoaglander, State Farm Agent and Champlin, H O A G L U N D. Uh, works out of Champlin, but I, I communicate with him by his app, phone, email. Uh, very responsive staff. And as I always remind you, he handles my insurance and he handles Michael Russo's insurance. Hey, Minnesota sports fans, this is your local State Farm Agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all $700,000, you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763 763- 421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. So Snow did very well at Class A, a little bit slower going at Double A. Uh, he's hit a couple home runs and I heard uh, Thad Levine talking on TV the night other night saying, hey, we're not going to rush it. You don't have to bring him up till May 20th when make sure he's completely ready. When he does come back, if he looks relatively fit and ready to play, do you think he could come in and make an immediate impact, or do you think it's going to take him a while to really gear up to major league pitching again? I think it will take him a while uh, to gear up. Uh, big leagues is different than any place he's going to play uh, before he gets to the big leagues by quite a margin. Uh, and I think that the Twins have the great luxury now, based on the way the lineup is hitting and the way the team is playing, that I think they can take the uh, at least private uh, tack of you know what he's got to hit his way up here. We're not going to we're not going to bring him up here and hand him a job uh, just because we've been expecting because of some of the things he's done in the past or because we've been expecting him to be a star at some point in time. Uh, you know we still expect him to be that, uh, but with everything that's happened with him to this point and with the way the club is playing and with the chemistry in the clubhouse uh, right now, I think it would be a mistake to to rush him back up here and have him playing every day. Um, it, it, I, I think he should hit his way back uh, as much as possible um, for the machinations that they would have to have, you know, they have to do to bring, you know, bringing him back and, and by when and all that stuff. But they certainly don't need to bring him back before they absolutely have to make him hit his way uh, back into the clubhouse so that everybody's excited, you know, really excited to have him. And then I think you you play him. You know, I mean, you've got a great luxury. You play him three or four days at third base and play Marwin Gonzalez the other days and then and play Marwin Gonzalez at first for Crone every once in a while and play him in the outfield for Kepler against a tough left-hander. I mean, that's what they wanted to use Gonzalez, the way they wanted to use Gonzalez in the first place. And I think this will give them 
an opportunity to to kind of see how that goes and 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 work Miguel uh, into it that way. The other benefit of having a deep position playing lineup and bench is you can also rest certain people against pitchers you don't think they match up well against and still have a deep right. lineup. And that's a that's another great uh, advantage to having Gonzalez. Well, yeah, and, th- and that was my point. I mean, uh, exactly. There's when you have um, you know Marwin Gonzalez, who, by the way, I mean, let's just say, it, let's just let's be it totally uh, uh, frank about this. He has played great wherever they put him. Mm-hmm. He's picked it at third. He's picked it at first. He's thrown out two runners when he played left field one time in New York. I, I mean, what a, an advantage. Uh, to have a guy that uh, can play all his positions and give you good at bats, uh, and uh, so the, you have the the manager has the ability to say who's pitching today and who are my best guys out there, and if Marwin's one of those guys uh, better than you know Sano on a given day against a given pitcher or you know a tough right hander, same with Crone, uh, same with Kepler, a tough left hander. Uh, or Rosario's played, you know, every day for you know a month. You know, give him a break, then and put Marwin out in left field like they did in New York. I, I mean, it, that's what he can do, what a manager can do, and and uh, give himself the best percentage chance of of, of having uh, ha- having a good day offensively. So absolutely, that's that's the great. I, that's why I, you and I both thought it was a great signing uh, uh, to sign Marwin Gonzalez. It became a genius signing when it turned out Miguel Sano swapped up his heel. Uh, let's talk about the roster a little bit. Uh, first, I want to thank Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Use the Bite Squad app. Upload your information. Makes ordering very easy. They have added a bunch of Minneapolis restaurants recently. They've added breakfast service. They can deliver lunch to your office. And obviously, for dinner, it saves you driving, parking, uh, spending money on parking, dealing with traffic. BiteSquad.com. Food for your mood delivered. Use the promo code Talk North. All one word, upper caps, for your first delivery free. Uh, after that, order Bite Squad because you're uh, you're supporting our network, and we do appreciate it. By the way, we appreciate Bite Squad sponsorship, and we also appreciate those people who who order Bite Squad. Uh, so Astadio's back soon. Sano's back relatively soon. You have Marwin Gonzalez. You have Adrianza, who's another moves guy. You have you know Cave as a as your kind of key backup outfielder. And you have both catchers playing well. Uh, what do you do if you're making roster decisions at this point? Well, I mean, it it, it kind of comes down to Ostadio versus Cave. Uh, I think um, there's going to be a pitcher probably uh, optioned out, and and I and they made the decision earlier to have you know Ostadio rather than Cave um, it, when they sent uh, sent Cave down. Uh, so, um, and, and you know, the, the tough thing for, uh, Jake cave is that two of the three starting outfielders are left-hand hitters also. So mm-hmm. there's not a, you, you know, there, there's not an obvious, uh, you know, and you know, Marwin Gonzalez can play outfield against left-handers. You know, if he, if you want to give one of those guys a day off and Jake's numbers against left, left-handers have, hasn't been very good. So, you know, it's, it's tough for him. Uh, if they did, I mean, that's why you look at Ostadio and say the way this guy can hit against right-handers and left-handers, but especially against left-handed pitching versus, versus Jake Cave. I think, I, I think that it, it would be tougher to, you know, to keep Jake. I, I think, I, I think La Tortuga has done enough to say for the man, you know, I, if I'm the manager, I'm saying, you know, I, I, I just want to have this guy around. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so I think, I think he stays. Uh, and when Sano comes back, then I think it's probably got to be a, a pitcher. Adrianza, um, it, it, in like manner, if I'm the manager, I watch him play defense at three positions. Well, actually four, because he's play. He can play first base also, and I watch how well he he plays, you know, in the infield, all four spots. Uh, and I said, yeah, I can't, I can't send him out. I mean, uh, and plus I think he's out of options, so they would lose him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Potentially, and I just don't think they can afford to to lose him. I, I watched him make a play at third, you know, last night coming in you know, in, in Toronto, second game in Toronto, and and he comes in, uh, charges the ball, throws on the run, overhand, and just a bullet on the run. I said, 
I mean, I had a good arm, and <laughs> when I played, I thought, I just, I just don't know that I could have, that I could have put that much velocity on that ball in the, in the position that he was in. So, and he does that every place he plays. You know, whether it's his arm at on funny plays at third, or whether it's his steadiness at second and short. I, I just think that uh, he's too valuable to the manager. So. I, I'm thinking uh, my guess is Cave at, at, with Feroz and 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 then a pitcher for Sano at some point. Uh, let's get one Twitter comment, and then uh, uh, <laughs> Twins Almanac put a great photo on Twitter yesterday I'm going to ask you about. First <laughs> on Twitter from Tony Lasky, he says, How good are our catchers, talking about the Twins, broken bats in the neck can't stop them. The only way to stop them is by plunking them in the elbow. Castro needs to wear the armor when batting. Uh, the catchers have been... Excellent. Uh, Garver has been really one of the best hitters in the big league since uh, the end of last season. And Castro has, you know, Castro is a defensive, uh, a defensive expert who has been hitting Garver's an offensive asset who has been catching well Uh, between those two and Acedio, they are getting as much out of the catcher position as I think we've seen the twins get out of the position a long time. Yeah. In a long time. That's, that's absolutely right. And uh, I, I think that, um, you know, Castro's has been hitting enough to justify uh, him being in the lineup, uh, and of course, uh, and I think to your point, at the point you were making, Garver's been catching well enough to make the combination of his offense and defense, uh, you know, eminently worth it. So, uh, and as a matter of fact, I got to tell you, I think, I think Mitch Garver is going to just continue to be a very good hitter. Uh, in the uh, in the major leagues, and and I, I think I said about a month ago, nah, maybe not a month ago, two or three weeks ago, I'm looking at the lineup and saying I, I, I the fifth spot in the order is the only thing that makes me a little bit nervous. Um, it, uh, over time, I, I just don't. I, maybe C.J. Crone will continue to be as good as he's as he's been. Generally, you want a guy that 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 uh, has a, that hits for a little higher average in the fifth spot just to protect. Uh, the potential strikeout uh, capability of uh, or potential of um, Cruz and, and Rosario with guys on base, and you, you know, it's, so it'd be hard to put Miguel Sano there uh, with you know 200 strikeouts a season at a rate until he you know until he proves that's not going to be the case. Uh, and so I, I think I made the case for uh, Mitch Garver just because I I hmm. really like yeah. how tough his at bats are. It, 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 he's just uh, he puts the ball in play, doesn't strike out an awful lot, and he gets he's getting huge, huge hits. And so, in a similar to having him hit leadoff against left-handers uh, when he wants to uh, move Kepler down in the lineup, I, you know, it could, it could turn out that Mitch Garver becomes the fifth hitter in this lineup at some point in time. Uh, good stuff. Uh, thanks to Roy. Thanks to BarryCoffee.com, uh, Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin. And uh, Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Let's wrap up uh, Twins Almanac with a, a photo of, I believe it's <laughs> your dad and Wayne Terwilliger turning a double play. Yeah. And, you know, I covered, I knew Twig when I covered the Twins. Uh, he was just a wonderful gentleman. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other guy in the photo. That that was, you know, tw- Twitter can drive you crazy. But every once in a while you see something like that and you go, okay, this is this is awesome. Well, it was awesome for me. Uh, obviously, you know, it was you know forty. I don't remember when it was nineteen forty nine or fifty. My dad was playing shortstop for the Cubs, and Twig was the second baseman. And um, the picture on Twitter was a picture of my dad having just fed the ball to uh, Twig on a double play, and Twig's turning it uh, over a sliding Jackie Robinson. It just fantastic picture uh, in on so many on so many levels. Uh, for Twig to have been a good buddy of my dad's, and then a, and then a coach and friend of mine later on, is pretty special. Uh, as I mentioned on Twitter, uh, both my dad and Twig at different times, obviously independently of each other, talked about the other one and and how much they how much each of them liked and respected the other the other guy. They had a, that was a fun double play combination for those two. It was wonderful to see it. Uh, in in history there and uh, on that picture and uh, on Twitter that was really really cool and you know uh, thanks to uh, Matt Johnson and Twins Almanac for uh, for throwing that up there that was cool 
awesome stuff. Uh, well, we got a good. I thought you. Were, I thought you were going. I thought you were going to. You. You were going to. You. You took enough shots at me on the uh, mustache picture. 